Good evening, everyone. I'm Pastor Mark. Thank you for joining me tonight for prayer time. We're going to look at a couple of passages, one written by Peter, the other one written by Paul, and it's going to talk a little bit about slavery, which I think is fitting whenever we think about the Martin Luther King uh, holiday tomorrow. Now, I know we're talking about civil rights and what a great civil rights leader he was, and that's not exactly slavery, but nevertheless, both of these sort of tend to get lumped together. And uh, I want to just take a minute and talk a little bit about the difference between spiritual bondage and physical bondage. When we think about physical bondage, what a tragedy it was when we look at Civil War days. When we look, we can go all the way back in the Bible and look at scriptures such as the book of Exodus, whenever the Hebrews were held in bondage to uh, the Egyptians. So slavery in that sense is a terrible, terrible thing. And tonight I want to talk about the reality of spiritual bondage and how we can be liberated from that. When I talk about spiritual bondage, I'm talking about being liberated from things that will cause us eternal damnation, sin, death, and the like. Because if we give our hearts to Jesus and ask him to have his way with us and we become his disciples, and truly he liberates us from that condemnation, we are free to live as his disciple. Now, what we do with that freedom is up to us as uh, you know, we're going to read here in these passages, I want you to look with me, first of all, 1 Peter chapter 2. Listen to what he says, uh, verse 16. He is talking to the church. He says, Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Now, so, and we talk about slavery as being bad, and physically it is a terrible thing. But when we look at things from the spiritual arena, we recognize that Peter's talking about Whenever we get that freedom, that liberation, liberty in Christ, we have a choice, don't we? We can either live for Christ with that liberated spirit, or, or we can choose to do our own thing. And listen to what Paul says about that in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, beginning with verse 1, he says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again, by a yoke of slavery. What does Paul mean here? Well, I think it's very similar to what Peter means here. Don't take your freedom in Christ as a license to now do evil. It, Peter said to live as God's slaves. We have a choice. Whenever we are liberated from sin and death, we can either go on and follow Christ, become his disciple, and sort of bound ourselves to God, who is the kind of master we want. Paul would talk about himself being a slave to Christ. It's a far cry from the slavery we know and think of whenever we think of the times on this earth when slavery existed and still exists. I mean, there's still sex trafficking and things like that and how evil and wicked that is. Being bound to Christ is something that's joyful because it brings him joy and it brings us joy because he's the kind of master that is kind and generous and promises to give us all things as he has given us his son in the person of the Father. So we can read this and we recognize that in the liberation we get from eternal damnation, the salvation we receive from Christ, the redemption of ourselves in him, we are faced with a choice. We can either take that and use it as a license for evil and wickedness and sin and things of the flesh, what we want to do. And according to Paul here in Galatians, did you hear it? He says, stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. If we decide to live for self and use our liberation as a license to do evil, which Peter talks about, Paul is saying we could end up getting bound to something even far worse than the condition we were in before. So we have a choice. When we choose Jesus and ask him to forgive us from our, our sins, whether it's infidelity or, or we have a, a problem with an addiction, he may liberate us from that. But then if we're not careful, if we use that liberation as a license to sin, we could find ourselves bound to something even worse, a worse addiction, a worse illicit affair, something of, of that nature, something to that effect. So yes, we want liberation from Christ, but then you know what we want to do? We want to be bound to Christ. It's a wonderful relationship. It's a personal relationship in which he wants to reward us. Truly, there is a death of self, but there is also an understanding that now we live righteous lives in Christ Jesus, for Christ Jesus. We are bound to him for eternity, wanting his joy and his glory to be reached. And he, in turn, finds pleasure in each one of us wanting to be bound to him. So the thought for tonight, 
Don't let your freedom be a license to do evil. Otherwise, you may find yourself bound to in slavery to something far worse than you were having the problem with at the first. Let's pray that never happens to us. Let's pray for freedom in Christ, not only for ourselves, but for those that we truly love. Almighty God, we thank you for the word tonight. We pray you would apply it to our hearts that it might live within us and that we might live for you. We pray you'd forgive us for any sin in our life, and we pray, Lord, that this new liberty we find in our relationship with Jesus would spur us on to good works, to good things, and it will bound us to Christ and to God. We know that a heavenly home waits for us, and Lord, we want to surrender our desires to you. Help us never to, lo- to use our freedom as a license to enter back into evil, which might lead to being bound to something far worse than we've ever experienced before. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you. Thank you for joining me tonight. I hope you have a great week, everyone.